we all have those friends, you know, the foodie friends, who when they find out we're going to a particular city, they always say, well, you've got to stop at so-and-so and get a so-and-so. You know, there are places like this, must-eat destinations all across the country. When I go to Philly, of course, it's the Philly cheesesteak sandwich. And I've been to all the great places, but you know, when you go to like a must-eat destination, you'll get there and there'll be like three, 400 people lined up around the block, all vying for the same item. And for those folks working behind the counter and doing the griddling, it's hard to put love in every sandwich. If you have six to eight people over, you can actually artisanally do each one, do it just the way you want. I like using my fire disc because the flavor is at the end of the cook where you're griddling the meat and adding the cheese and the onions. You can meld those flavors just one at a time. That has love in it, no question about it. My background is barbecue, so I like the twist of putting a little smoke on the meat first. Just a kiss of hickory or oak. You'll see, let's make one or two or three, you know? There's a lot of controversy on what goes into making the proper Philly cheesesteak sandwich, but there shouldn't be any disagreement about this. Ribeye. I think that's the way to go. Uh, well marbled. This happens to be prime. I really pestered my butcher until he came up with it. I think he went into the back room. I think he held it for one of his regular customers. This is really gonna hold up to the whole process of making this. We're going to be able to put it through the smoke and put it onto the griddle and maintain its moisture and its flavor. Here's another aspect I don't think there should be too much contention about. GSP, granulated garlic, kosher salt, and coarse ground butcher pepper. Those three elements combined are the perfect seasoning for the meat and they're gonna give us uh, all the flavor that we need, you'll see. My first foray into outdoor cooking was low and slow smoked meat. I've been doing that for about 20 years and I love being able to take uh, large primal cuts of beef or pork and to render it very tender and give it that light touch of smoke. But then when I started using a fire disc, I could tell it was a great marriage between the two styles of cooking starting something off low and slow uh, and then finishing it hot so you have the best of all these flavors and as you're going to see today the fire disc is actually star of the show next to of course the beef i'm going to be using a texas style offset smoker cooks with all wood and that's the whole purpose of this cook anyway is to add some smoke to the meat uh, we're going to be cooking on the low range of the barbecue cook temperatures, around 200, maybe 225. I've added a little bit of water to the chamber just so we have moisture there. And I'm going to be using pecan wood, just kind of dry moisture content around 15%. I actually, yes, I have a moisture meter. I've got a lot of my wood down to embers here. I put on a fresh stick so that we could get just a little bit more smoke. Remember, we're just smoking this meat. We're not actually cooking. We're only going to take it up to just below rare, so 120 degrees tops. The whole purpose of this part of the cook is to get this meat ready for the fire disc. Okay, here we go. We're about 45 minutes in, and I just wanted to attempt these to sort of demonstrate exactly what we're looking at. See, we're at 119. We're not, not even, we're between raw and rare somewhere, and that's what we want. But we did get smoke on it. Believe me, it's been kissed by the wood. So these ribeyes were getting very cozy in that smoker, but 40 minutes, that's it, fellas, you're done. You need some good plastic wrap. I have a very love-hate relationship with plastic wrap, only because it's just so stubborn and it often doesn't do what you want, but you need it for this dish because this meat has to be wrapped nice and tight. Once we're done with that, I'll show you what happens. Into the deep freeze. Yeah, play well with others, okay, you two? I'll be back in about three and a half, four hours. Firm up, all right? You're gonna need two onions. I like to go with the sweeter onions here. The Vidalia are perfect. You're gonna wanna do a medium dice. Now we're speeding this up so you don't notice my mediocre knife skills. Don't do it this way, okay? In Philly, there are two ways to order a cheesesteak. You either order it whiz wit or whiz without. We're preparing a whiz wit, which means with onions. That is the way you want it. And a fire disc is the perfect cooker to bring out those aromatics along with a subtle crunch. 
Okay, before we go out to the fire disc where the fun starts, we gotta make a cheese sauce, right? That's part of the legend. No. I mean, not that it's not a fine product. I mean, a lot of people prefer it, right? It's, you know, got cheeses in it, yeah? Cheeses with a Z. Let's make it ourselves, all right? Here's what you need. A double boiler, which we can fashion out of a bowl. I got a hot plate here. Water underneath. A cup of any combination you want of half and half or heavy cream or milk and then a selection of cheeses. Now I like to combine the cheeses. This is one of the higher priced cheeses, Vermont sharp cheddar. This is some sliced American here and some sliced cheddar here because we need that color. God knows what's in there, but we like that color. You know the saying, a washed pot never boils? Only partly true. Let's see if we can't get this started, all right? Now we're gonna do this a little at a time. Uh, we'll pour in the whole cup but when it comes to adding the cheese, we're gonna do it a little at a time because we don't wanna overwhelm this base. And that's all it is, is a base to combine all the cheeses, okay? So let's start with uh, my, my favorite color of cheese. We'll start with a couple of slices of that. And we have a whisk. And we'll just begin to combine slowly. Work with cheese that is at room temperature. The limper and warmer the cheese is, the quicker this will go. However, I can already feel my biceps improving. Remember hearing as a kid, don't play with your food? Yeah, I'm all growed up now. You can see we're thickening up just a little bit more, which means we probably got another five minutes or so and there's more cheese left, a little bit more. There you go. Boy, the smell is fantastic. There's just something about dairy. Well, if you can write in your cheese, I think you're ready. That's about, that's about what we want. This is the part of the cook where we get to use a gadget. There's only one way to achieve the proper slicing of the ribeye, and that's with a mandolin. This mandolin is the one suggested by Stephen Cusato. He has a cooking channel on YouTube called Not Another Cooking Show. And he has a lot of great recipes, and uh, some suggestions for today came from what he does. This is the Ben Reiner Mandolin, a Japanese company. It is the only go-to for this product. I know it's like I'm hawking it, but honestly, you gotta use this. And what I like to do is set it on the thinnest slice possible because you want like wafers on this meat. And I usually just take this. No, the apple is not in the recipe. This is just to test the mandolin. I'm wearing protective gloves underneath the latex this time. Uh, you know, in case there's an accident, and hopefully we're just gonna get meat, no blood. Here's the ribeye, you can see there's some smoke that's on it, it's changed the color. You can even smell, it's like slightly cured, just a little bit cured, but it's still rare inside. Here we go, let's give it a try. I'm gonna stand for this, okay? Because you wanna put your weight behind it, and when you're making the cut, be decisive, be committed, go through it, okay? And here we go. I like that it's the longer cut with this. It's really hot out, so the meat defrosted just a little bit, but the Ben Reiner is still doing the cuts. So as you can see, we're getting, we're getting longer, thinner slices down here, and that's exactly what we want to work with when we're doing the fire disc. And each cut is getting wafers. It may not look like it, but we're certainly getting close to the apple width that we had. Let's talk bread. Look for rolls that are soft on the inside, crusty on the outside. Match up the roll with a large spatula. We slice the ends off because honestly, who gives a rat's ass about those? We wanna slice into the bread so that it remains hinged. I'm not only making cheese steaks, I'm a daredevil. Don't do it like this. This is a two spatula dish. 
uh, you're going to need both these tools for the action you're going to take on the fire disc with the ribeye. One should be the length of the bread, as I showed you earlier, and then the second one should be heftier with a sharper edge, because you're going to use that to tear and cut, like so. I'm left-handed. All right, it's time to use our fire disc, and the wind has kicked up a little bit, but there's this wonderful wind guard that's made that uh, is going to be used tonight. And let's just get this fired up and we can get started here. You know how I said you need to use ribeye for a Philly cheesesteak? I stand by that. You also should use beef tallow. And beef tallow at some places you can get at the fancier markets, but you can also make it yourself. Just ask the butcher to save all the fat and the trimmings that he would normally throw out. And if your butcher is really nice to you, he's going to do that. Once it's rendered, it looks like this. And that's what we're going to use to cook. I have the fire disc on high, and it's been heating for a while, so I think we're good to go. And the smell is fantastic, and of course there's flavor here. First thing we're gonna do is griddle up all those onions that we diced earlier. Not all of them necessarily, but we got about a pound here. And we're gonna cook them until they're transparent. I banked the diced onions since they look perfect. They've also left a lot of flavor for us right here in the center of the disc. So we're gonna put on some beef tallow and then onto the meat. That's what we wanna hear, the great sound, especially when it's beef tallow. So as soon as we get that heated up, we're going for the meat. So the goal here is gonna be basically to brown one side and flip the whole thing and then start working it. And then we're going to gradually work the onions back in. We're going to let it brown. So we've only got the single spatula action. Since I salted the meat already when we were smoking it, I'm not going to put any additional, but you can put anything you want at this point. Uh, I would suggest some more salt. I'm just helping the browning action along here. Beautiful sounds, beautiful sights, beautiful smells. Okay, we're about to turn this. As you can see, we've done some browning here. Let's start in with the double spatula, okay? What's great about the fire disc is this uh, cast iron is really hefty and stands up to this kind of action, which is what you want on a great griddle. And also, I love how, because of the shape of the bowl here, the flavor concentrates down here in the middle. You want to have a lot of fun, go to any Philly cheesesteak place and watch the griddle action. This is what's fun about doing this. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I'll have a little beef broth standing by and I'll throw that on there. But this uh, beef feels so tender to me, I don't think I'm going to be using the beef broth. But a nice splash of that is a great trigger, they call it. And the meat is pulling apart actually really easily cooking very well on this, so we're about ready to start folding the onions back into it. Okay, it's time to start blending the onions back in. I'm trying to use the flare and the action of somebody that's worked at a Philly cheesesteak place. I don't know if I have that down, but it actually... It does kind of look like I know what I'm doing, doesn't it? We're just gonna combine some of this cheese that's been whisked. Remember when I said you need to be able to write with your cheese? Well, there you go. This is to blend all these flavors in. Everything's melded now. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna shape this. And because the spatula is shaped like the bread, you've got your schematic right here to shape the meat. We're going to keep this spatula handy because that's going to be our final action here. Inched. That's it. Now everything is going to have like a big synchronicity, a big melding of flavors. Let's give it a minute there. What this is doing for us is it's caramelizing the top of the sandwich because the sandwich is upside down now. And what we're going to get is a Maillard effect on the top of the meat. And that's going to show on the top of the sandwich, going to make it that much more appealing and add more flavor. 
Okay, it's done with one action. Here we go. We can see a bit of the caramelization on top. More cheese. Come on over here. A hint of the smoke, that great griddled meat that we can get on the fire disc. Melded in with that soft inside of the bread and the crusty exterior. I may have saved myself a trip to Philadelphia. <laughs>